Hi guys, so after I did my last video, I got a response from Discount Hub again, who says, um, no, your analysis is still not correct. Africans don't recognize colorism or racism because it's not their reality. The only exception is South Africa because their history of apartheid because of their history of apartheid for kenyans like maoroa the issue is socioeconomic it's poverty this controls the entire mindset and his and this is where myra is myra has said he wants a european so his kids can get e euro passports and be able to travel freely and i believe he genuinely wants this for his future kids myra's mother wants him to settle down she's a etc i'm i don't have but anyway i wanted to go back to the colorism because as you guys know that i am this is this whole channel is against colorism and when i encountered myra i was like okay oh my god this is this guy is showing everything that I suffered that I was not able to show because these people did it um discreetly that you can't say oh my god and then you had nobody of course to talk to and I didn't have any cameras and even if I were to that it wouldn't have been easy to catch but Myra is cat is um displaying them and I am able to point to them and say yes that's the problem at the same time, um, the events that have been going on with Myra, you know, shows that he, there's a calling for him. This is what I actually want to do the video on this video on. But I did want to respond to um discount um hub that I disagree. Um, it's even to the point where I learned this new word. Um, I think la a few years ago when I started watching the YouTube um the YouTube tubers. Um, I I used to watch um Vanessa Camby and um I can't remember the other one's name. She uh the, there Vanessa Cam Camby happens to be the I think Irish Scottish something like that mixed with Ghanaian, whereas the other one is Japanese mixed with Ghanaian. If you guys remember her name, please let me know. And they were discussing color, um, featureism. So the word featureism, I never thought about because I, I'm always like, even I even did a video recently of my hair, you know, which is a feature. Um, and they were saying the problem with featureism in Africa, and colorism was mentioned. So if they are experiencing it, you know, um, I don't, I would not agree with the idea that colorism doesn't exist. And that's my problem. My problem has been throughout my life has been the denial of colorism, you know, because I, was, I wasn't I was even able to really talk about it. And not only is it denied, but it, it's like, you're not really allowed to talk about it, you know, because it's like you have such social oppression um, from talking about it. So, um, you know, so it is, it is not something that I will deny because I've lived it um i as a black in the um in the americas and um i will not deny that it exists either in africa because i hear you have your mixed blood um your point fives in ghana who are talking about it and i'm not gonna say it's only in ghana only in south africa because when i first learned about kenya i, I remember think learning about the point fives and i never had imagined the um revolution that i'm seeing in kenya is almost like everybody like you know to make it like you know to be big they're all mixed this is why mr mutu i look up to him because his couple because his family is not look aspiring towards that exotic european um tra traits um searching kind of thing you know he just remains very simple and so we see that also in myra's village everybody you don't see that in his village the mixture but I, there is definitely something about them feeling as if, you know, like the lighter they are, maybe the higher class, if, he, if, it, if it is a class system that he's trying to break through. So he is looking for that. It's not just for the euro. If he was just looking for euro, he's found blacks everywhere that he goes. So if he, if he, so if he really cared about um, just for the European passport, he would have been able to just make you know even stay in some of these european he's in a, the u.s 
which is offering a lot of opportunities where, you know, if you were to say, okay, you know what, let me apply for a residency or whatnot, he will get job, he will get the passports he need. I mean, the world would be open for him. Myra is not looking for a passport. He's looking for something else. And part of it happens to be colorism. And um, colorism is the hate that I have experienced among Haitians that they will kill you if you do not want to comply to their um to the place that they put you to stay in in society. So I will not deny it and I will not deny what I see in Myra. So anyway, let's piggyback on what I have to say. Um, I, I do find it interesting that every time Myra comes against uh, the reactors, God always comes and pulls us out of it. And not only that, blesses us 777 times. And there's a reason why, and it's because Myra is like Jonas. He is not listening to the call, his calling. God has a calling for Myra. And um, he has a ministry. I don't know what his ministry is supposed to entail, but um, based since he came into the U.S., I do see um, God having a very strong hand in his life. Everything he tries is like against him, you know? He wanted to stay in New York uh, even before he came in with um and hang out with his European girl in um in the city at um at his friend's house and the friend couldn't because a wor friend works you know the friend works um I think two jobs so the friend didn't have that so then he decided let me go to my rich friend's house and try to show her off and that friend of course um saw beyond that and you know. Apparently, it does not support colorism um, because the friend lives in like a very rich black community. So if Myra was actually looking for blacks, I mean, Myra would have looked for blacks because he, he, he came into the U.S. in a black community. Myra is looking for Muzungu. OK, and it is colorism. So now let us. um. Let, there are too many blacks around the world for you to tell me that, oh, his search for Muzungu is just um, a matter of economics. L um, open up your Bibles with me to Ephesians 6, verse 12. Ephesians 6, verse 12. I feel as if, like, you know, through Myra, God is attacking colorism, at least for me, you know, but at the same time, he has a greater calling than just that. Um, Ephesians 6 verse 12 King Ver James Version says for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of the of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places okay so this is what Myra is fighting against right now um, he is fighting against the wick um, the wicked system that he is trying to promote um, well, he's fighting for it and God is fighting against it. And um, he doesn't know it because he doesn't even realize that 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 he, that, you know, he is downgrading a certain group of people who have been um, oppressed and um, and God is coming through. I mean, um, when we look to see what's going on with the sister, she's running havoc. OK, she is just running havoc and for a lady. It is just not acceptable. It's not acceptable in the African community. It's not acceptable in the Black community anywhere. And this young lady, she had a lot of opportunities. Yes, Michele Ponte did not like her. He kept on making fun of her. But at the same time, because of Michele Ponte's own economic limitations, Michele Ponte respected that family because of what they were doing for him, um, providing for him in Africa, and therefore respected her. So she actually had the respect, you know, within that relationship, even if it wasn't a romantic one, if it was just family, she had that respect, but she blew it off by paying some Filipino guy who had no interest in her. Because if you notice when she came home crying um, about BJ loving her, and it's because you know there was a discussion between her and Ponte and a lot of the things that um, she didn't want to look back at surfaced. OK, let us look at this conversation. Myra's innocence. Myra has no idea what's going on between D. OK, um, because when he when he's in Ponte's house, he's like, yo, man, what's going on between you and my sister? You know, because Myra thinks that, you know, D and Ponte like each other. But D, she's in a different mindset. OK, she's um, she's a bad girl right now. <laughs> it's just... But you guys enjoying the show. 
but uh, but the, you see, even now she's saying we we, TV series. we need to do a TV series, bro. I just told myself she she loves publicity so much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now <laughs> no, today she called me. She said, "Maro, honestly, I am working, but my heart is not here." No, she told me that. Priya, book a flight, come book, wash book a flight. We wash dishes here, Priya, and you become superstar. In fact, I'll not be there, so it will be good. No, you you can come back. Huh? You can go and come yeah. back. Philippines is just right here. Or maybe I mentioned. No, it's all right. Mara, Priya is not interested in you at all. Get your facts right. Okay, maybe. Who knows? Uh, call JB, Miss JB. I don't know who JB is. No, JB is my boyfriend right now. Oh. So then, like, I call him. No, I can't call him because he has a flight tomorrow. And right now, yeah. we are five hours ahead Philippines okay. time. So it's okay. midnight there. So no. Behind or ahead? Ahead. Then there it's early morning. It's 11. No, they are ahead of us. Yeah, they're they, ahead of us. Not us. Yes. Yes. So, okay. So JB, maybe my sister will introduce, introduce me to JB. So Let's here you have it. My wife is so confused please help. regarding this daily situation. Yeah, I can just go for a name. Okay, you can call Michele Ponte because he's still stuck with Michele, the Michele and the Peter. So this is in the chat. This JB is something that Myra is just finding out right now. And I think there was another video when when the very first time that B mentioned it, he didn't even he didn't even acknowledge it to the point where he, this time he's like, I guess he the boyfriend thing, but this time she, the name is mentioned, he doesn't even know. So um Myra is not completely like into what D is doing while he is supporting the younger sister. Um, D is into her own thing, and in the meantime, Myra does have a calling, and um, and he needs prayer. So, and he needs to um, he needs discernment. He needs to be praying on a regular basis. Um, thanking God for what he God has done for him. We thank God that God gave him that family with um, Mr. Mutua, who's like a father, a big brother to him, and um. We thank God he, so that he has that shelter. So he has the social entourage and he has the shelter that is really important. And, um, and you know, he has food and um, some kind of safety. Um, but we he also needs to be praying every day. I notice the Mutuas, I don't see them going to church with Myra. We know that that is very important. Um, I, I don't know why Myra, what it is that Myra has that he doesn't really show uh, church life and things like that you know um he says he's spiritual now um so I don't know if there was some kind of conflict with the church that he was in be it seven day Adventist or whatever other church that he might have been exposed to in his childhood what what was the community problem because you know the church is very important in um creating the community that we need in order for our well-being you know for our nurturing so what kind of community problem did Myra have within the church that makes him not even ever go and seek the church but God is calling him right now and God showed that to him when he tried to destroy the reactors and instead God empowered us more with his own um with his own efforts and and every and he he is in defiance to God's calling he is definitely in defiance to God's calling so um my suggestion to Myra is on a daily basis, if, you know, if he can't pray alone, if the family is not praying, or even when he's not with the family, and so long as he's in the United States, um, he should call this number. It's a 24-7 prayer line. Um, the number is 1-866-273-4444. And any of you who are listening, if you ever are in need of prayer, Okay, you can call 1-866-273-4444. Somebody will answer you and you will give them your prayer request and they will pray with you so that you are not alone because it says when more than one are gathered, it is there that God is. So a God, again, supporting the idea of friendship and of community, which is helpful to the human being. So... um. You guys, let me know what do you think about what um 
what Discount Hub had said. Is it because of poverty that Myra wants European or is it because of colorism? Does colorism exist in Kenya or am I wrong, right? Um, why, why are people fleeing the African continent in that area to go for European? And then what about all the blacks in the US or the blacks in South America? All right, that may be encountered. Why are they going for European versus a fellow black? I mean, isn't that colorism? Please put your comments and like the video. Um, also, um, regarding the prayer and um, Myra's calling, of course, prayer is needed. Daily prayer, morning and evening, if possible. Um, reading of the Psalms, memorizing a few so you can recite when you don't have a Bible nearby. And um, thanking God for his blessings, um, his blessings in all of our lives and all of you who are here today. So um, this is all I had to say. Please like this video, comment, and subscribe.